I know that we're not going to be here for a little bit, but remember to subscribe to our YouTube, rate this freaking podcast five stars because you know you love us and because you know we deserve it. We put the work, okay? And pretty please. Like, follow. Yeah, pretty no, please. no, pretty please. I think some people like it when you say please, okay? <laughs> I'm a brat, okay? But okay, please yeah, thank but you. I love you. I'm not. <laughs> You'll be rewarded, Susie, for your compliance. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Uh, we love you, seniors. Don't forget to follow, subscribe, raid. I'm going to plug that in every episode the next season. So do it already. Do it already so you mm -hmm. can tell me, I already did it. Stop saying it. We love you. <laughs> thank you. Hello and welcome to Come With Us, a podcast to meet all your fantasy needs. I'm Susie Nunez. And I'm Rache Kelly. And we're here to dive into the tempting world of books seductive romance, and a sprinkle of spice. Sinners! Welcome to episode 15. And, so, and 16, we don't know, I'm cutting the episodes because some of the feedback that we got <laughs> was that they were long, they were great, but they were long. And I was like, you know what? I listen. I listen to you guys. And now we are having 40 to 50-ish. But yes, we're here. We're better. We're doing what we can. Uh, I'm Susie Nunez. I'm so yeah. happy that you're here for episode 15 and maybe 16 of Come With Us, your new favorite podcast. Mm -hmm. And here I am ready for anything and everything fall or Halloween because I'm so ready. So, so, so ready. I'm so ready too. I'm Rache Kelly and I'm your in-house coffee fiend, Doctor Who obsessed, ready for sweaty wet sweater, sweaty weather, sweat sweater weather, no. girly. Never, <laughs> never sweat. Uh, I love that one. That one's great. God. But you know what? Do you know what we love? Uh, sweater weather. <laughs> sweater weather. We love sweater, sweater weather. weather. <laughs> Yes. I just need a big, I just want like a big table knit, table oh. knit sweater, just like to just like a big, you know, and then you can stand wistfully next to a window holding your tea. You know what I'm saying? Stop. Like vibe. when I tell you my, literally my like perfect life is that and with a book, like a huge library. Mm -hmm. And you, and then you just get like a really comfy couch. The whole house smells like pumpkin and vanilla and like sweets and like bread at the same mm. time. Yeah, the full life. <laughs> <laughs> you guys, you know when you find a show, either TV show, podcast, book, whatever, that entertains you, that you're like, oh my God, I found my people. They understand me. They're speaking from my heart, even though we don't know each other. Well, the lady, the amazing woman that we have today on the podcast is Krami from the Double Team Podcast. And she's like that for me. When I found their podcast, I don't even remember how. I was on Instagram probably one day and I saw a clip and I went through like a whole rabbit hole, found them, uh, like their actual podcast. And since that day, I'm obsessed. I'm so obsessed that my friend bought me tickets to go see them on their show, even though my friend never seen them before. And yes. She's here. I, I'm going to tell you something. I'm so excited. Oh. I don't even, if I, if I fucked up my words today, you know, it's because I'm very excited. So bear with me, but say hello. <laughs> welcome to Patty. <laughs> I love it. Lovely, <laughs> lovely to be here. I'm so happy to be here. When I was Thank listening to the podcast, me. of course, when I was listening to your podcast, I remember the first time that uh, I heard that you read books. I was like, oh my God, please let them be smutty. Let them be crazy. Let them be super, super like spicy. <laughs> and it makes sense because, you know, they have a sex podcast. Uh, and when she said it was smut, it was fantasy smut. It was reverse harem. It was white shoes. I was like, yes. <laughs> oh my God. She understands me <laughs> in a different level. <laughs> what is your podcast about? Uh, Non-monogamy, sexuality, and kink. I mean... So. What can we say? We just found our people. Perfection. <laughs> They're right here. <laughs> Peanut butter and jelly, baby. Yes. I mean, a lot through like middle school, high school, I was reading the young adult. Um, and then I think during college is when I made the leap to like the dirtier books. I went from young adult mm. to the new adult genre. And I think after like two years, two, three years, then I discovered smutty books and I was like oh my god so life I have been an avid reader my whole <laughs> life and smut books 
honestly, like, and that's actually, I, and I've spoken about this on the pod before, but like, you know, smutty books, reverse harem. It's one of the reasons why I have my podcast today. Yeah, I know. So it, it's the reason it like, Nikki and I would read together, you know, like we would both be reading the same books and then, you know, we discuss it and like being able to like openly talk about like, you know, the sex scenes in this book or whatever. Um, it's what helped us like strengthen our relationship and being open with an, with one another. So thanks to these ladies is that come with us exist <laughs> because uh, I was one day I finished Akatar, the last book then uh, Silver Flames. And I was like, I need to talk about this. And then I went to listen to one of your episodes. I don't remember which one was it. And <clears throat> you said something like, it's because of these books that I do blah, 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 blah. And I was like, wait, I can talk about books and sex on the same like platform. And that's how Come With Us came to life besides a lot of other reasons. But yeah, she was one of them. So thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. <laughs> Um, I was, I'm interested to know what was your first smutty book? Mm, 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 um, mm. Okay. I, fuck. I can't remember which one my first like true smut book was, but I can't tell you which one was my first, um, my first reverse harem, which actually mm. it was right around that time that I discovered smut because I was reading this. I had just finished shadow hunters by Cassandra okay. Clare. If y'all haven't read that one, you need to. Love that series. And then I jumped into another fantastical, like, fairy series um, soon after that. And it was about these three girls. And they all had, you know, their respective little boos and lovers. And it was a little smutty, but not, not that much. And then I read, so my first reverse harem was Four Psychos by Christy Cunning. Mm -hmm. And that mm -hmm. had uh, like a really good spice level. Now, I don't know if you've read Christy Cunning before. I've read several of her series. You really have to like get in it because her books are, it's like, I don't know if she's like high on <laughs> mushrooms when she writes them, but I swear to God, like I can't fucking keep up. Keep up. I can't. Her, her writing is, and the scenarios she comes up with, I'm like, who, who raised you? So Christy Cunning, Christy Cunning is a phenomenal author, but she's really out there. Before Psychos <laughs> is fucking hilarious, A. B, the guys in it are chef's kiss, and there's four of Ooh. them. Jude, Kai, um... And I forgot the other two. They're fucking hot. And I loved them so much. They were my first, like, reverse harem booze. Uh, and then the plot was actually pretty good. It just got really confusing after, like, at book three and four, it was, like, a, a stretch. Um, mm. But I really enjoyed them. So that would be my first, like, smutty reverse harem. Like, the first one that, like, I truly remember for smut was was Christy Cunning. That's awesome. Which if you guys haven't read it, you need to. So we can talk about those. Adding it to the TBR right now, I know okay. it. Is it fantasy? Yes. Yes. Oh, cool, cool, cool. Exciting. Awesome. <clears throat> what type of world yeah. are we talking about? Like, are we talking fairies? Are we talking werewolf? Are we talking vampires? What is it? The way it starts out, she's a ghost. And then I, I can't, I can't ruin it for y'all. I can't, if I, if I even I, start talking about it, like I'm giving away too much, um, but Lucifer is in it. Yeah. The apocalypse. Okay. Like four horsemen think, Ooh, you know, okay, four psychos. Okay. Gotcha. That's a little bit of a hint. So that's all I'll tell you, but I love reading like dark romance, bully romance. I love, you know, high fantasy, epic fantasy, urban fantasy. I'll read anything as long as it's got fantasy in it. Mm -hmm. um, so this is a good one for that. It's, it is very urban fantasy to a point. I love Cammy. that. That sounds awesome. Cammy, if your life was a book, what would the title of this chapter be right now? I actually really love this question. So thank you for asking, guys. Because after having just turned 30 a few days ago I, and going through all the shit with the eclipse. Um, thank you. It's been, you know, I'm going to title this chapter 30 
flirty and thriving because I really do think my 30s are going to be like the best decade. I've learned so much and I can't wait to see, you know, how everything plays out for this, you know, these next 10 years. Um, and then also just, I would also title it like trusting the process. That's where I'm at right now. Damn. Uh, that is amazing. Yes. I freaking love it. And I think 30s, to me, in my mind, I always thought that 30s was when everything was going to get better. And I always knew, heck fucking yes, baby. Welcome to your 30s. Everything hurts, but that's okay. <laughs> your, knees, your knees aren't what they used to be, but that's okay. It's worth it. It's worth it. Oh, yeah. So if you will have to choose like one, just one favorite non smutty book, which one would it be? And why though? Uh, definitely the Divergent series. I cried like a baby. Have you like if you read like Hunger Games? It's like that. It's very YA. Um, yeah. You know, there's a love, there's a love component to it, but it's not like they're fucking or anything like that. So it's not smutty. Uh, but Divergent, a the ending sucked. I will always hate the ending. Um, but B, like, oh man, I just I, when I when I remember reading it, I thought her writing was phenomenal, and I fell in love with Triss and four. And so it's definitely my favorite more so than hunger games. When I tell, Ooh. I never read hunger games, but when I tell you the divergent series traumatized me and I could never actually <laughs> I, in Venezuela, I had the whole series. I yeah. brought some books with me from there and I left those like I, and every time I see them on a bookstore, I'm like, fuck you, <laughs> fuck you. <laughs> Yeah, but it's true. I, I was just reading my review of the series um, the other day because I, I, I review books on Goodreads and I was reading my review and I was like, fuck you, author. <laughs> I was so mad. That guy, TikToker, Zach, the one that had a lot of controversy, he said that one of the reasons he entered his reading slump is because he read Divergent and he was so upset about the end <laughs> that he like was stopped reading for like a decade. I'm like, okay, I'm never going to read those books. So, Well, it's true. It's one of the first books that I read that didn't give you the happy ending. And mm. I don't know if you've read the Cricket series by Amy Bartle, but it's very much the same thing. The ending mm. sucks. So whenever I see, especially like series like Fourth Wing, where it's like tragic ending, I'm like, if you pull a Divergent ending or an Amy Bartle ending, I will riot. I need my happily ever after, or I will literally go into depression. You would love, there's this, uh, this place I love to get stickers from, uh, and it's called probably smut.com, uh, Sponsor us. free Ooh. advertising for them. Look, look at all of my stickers. Just, oh my God. Yeah. There's so many. Yeah. But they have I love one. them. They have one that has like a peace sign, like a hand holding up a peace sign, and it says H E A or I'm out. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, yes. Period. Yeah. Period. Oh my so, God. Probably no, smart. Uh, I'm going to look that up right now. Uh, they're great, by the way. Uh, definitely yeah. sponsor us. We are great for your brand. Do it. We guarantee sales. Please. Hmm. <laughs> Be mostly sales because I'm buying their stuff all of the time. <laughs> I spent. I spent like $40 on stickers for my birthday. As you Do should. It. I fucking love stickers. I have a whole water bottle full of them. Yeah. Heck yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. But honestly, right. uh, when I saw his TikTok, that video about the Divergent series that he made, SAG made, I was like, mm -hmm. he unlocked trauma that I forgot about. And after that, I've been through a book so <laughs> like what, five times? And every time, I don't know, you know that? effect i don't remember right now right now the name but it's like when you think about something and then you see it i've seen it so much lately and i'm like every time fuck you you could have given us so much and really? you just you <laughs> decided to not to not do it and i'm like i will never forgive you i do think that her writing is really good i do think so and I still think that she could make yes. amazing books but after that i will never read anything from her again in my life <laughs> you have trust issues that's fair yeah it's yeah. okay. I have trust issues with Christy Cunning. <laughs> oh, ooh. And you're telling me that. to read the books anyway? Exactly. <laughs> read the book. 
to read the book. So what made you decide to read, since we're talking about Silver Flames today, or actually all of the books from the A Court of Thorns and Roses series, I want to know what made you want to read the series. Actually, I would say, so I gave up reading for about two years. Um, After 2020, I didn't read very much from like 2021 to 2022. Uh, this year was actually the first year where I started picking up books again. Mm-hmm. And uh, my friend Courtney, um, shout out to her, she gave me the physical copy that she had of um, the first Akatar book, A Court of Thorn and Roses. And I was like, okay, I'm going to read this. And I just, oh man, it sucked me in like a vacuum. And now that hard copy is with another friend because she's going to start reading it. So I'm like, this is the oh. traveling book of the. Sister I love it. Whatever. We, we, are, we are creating um, a cult, and I love it. Yes. <laughs> well, and also, I had just seen so much on Book Talk. I was like, okay, I have to check them out. Question, though. That's awesome. Yeah. Were you so a what's your... girl? So, be honest. <laughs> here's the thing. I read uh, Throne of Glass a long time Glass, ago. Yeah. Yeah, but it's been it's been a it's been a while, and I I had not remembered how in like in Throne of Glass she kind of like you know from the first like book and into two she changed the love story right it was Mm -hmm. you know there was Mm -hmm. sam there was dorian and then it went into rowan well whenever i started reading a court of thorns roses i immediately the moment tamlin said i love you i was like he's not the mean guy i i just i I was like it 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 was the yeah it was the way she wrote it it was so mediocre it was mm-hmm. so, it was not giving the stars have a mind. And I was like, okay, so Tamlin's not end game. And then I gave up on him. I was like, <laughs> this is it. I'm done. You so. know what? It wasn't giving, oh, there you are. Mm. I've been looking for you. It wasn't giving that. It wasn't giving purple eyes. Mm-hmm. And that's yeah. the thing is, I remember in the first, the first time she met recent, which I'm going to say recent because Rice Sand, I don't know why she would use Thank that you. Yeah. it's totally resolved. yeah re- yeah what no. are you like oh, 17th honestly, century vampire resigned no exactly no it's recent also like the way you say r-h-y-s that's like the old you know Reese. the old time version of reese yeah so it's like okay so recent got it okay um but anyways the first time she met recent where she was like and then I, you know, met the most beautiful human, or then I ran into the most beautiful human I've ever met. I was like, okay. Yeah. So you have Tamlin back at home. What do you mean the most beautiful man you've ever seen? <laughs> yep. And I can tell you, I knew the moment that they became mates. At the very end of Akatar, whenever they're at, he's at that ledge. And he like looks surprised at her all of a sudden, and then he just flies away. As soon as I read that, I was like, "Oh my god!" He just realized they're mates, and he flew away. So, oh you, yeah, 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 you yeah. knew that it was the mate, the mating bond snapping into place. When I when oh, I yeah. saw when I read that, I was like, I, I mean, I knew it was gonna come back. I knew it was gonna like make a recurrence. But I, I thought it was like, I thought it was like, am I was hoping it was Amarantha wasn't dead, and she was like pulling him back or something and he was like oh shit i gotta go or something <laughs> no i was no, really hoping I'm... for a bad guy arc <laughs> it's still uh, hoping no, for it it's him, still... like throughout the the way he treated her in the dungeons and the way that he um like in that one scene where like her and tamlin finally get to reconnect and she has like all the paint on her and then you know, Tamlin mm-hmm. goes away and then Reason has to like basically cover up the fact that those two were making out. The way he did that, I was like, he's he's her love story. Yeah. Like it's gonna be he's he's not the bad guy. And I could see that throughout those scenes in the book where it's like even though he was making her, you know, drink the fairy wine, which why what by the way, why the fuck did the fairy wine go away? Like did anyone yeah. think about that? Yeah, totally. I you think that I thought it was like once, once I thought it was just like once she became a fairy, it didn't affect her the way that it did when she was human. Oh, maybe you're right. Okay, you're right. You're right. Because I was just because they were they drink that. wine at the they drink wine at the restaurant. They have wine at Solstice. She gets drunk mm-hmm. at Solstice with Cassian. Mm-hmm. 
you're right. And that's what right. I was like, where's the fun in, in fairy wine again? I wanted to be like that right? level of like, whoa, where's Oh, oh, don't yeah, don't that. tell me that these fairies have existed for millennia and they haven't figured out the fairy equivalent of Coke. Okay? Parties happen. See, you get me. Where's the parties? <laughs> well, wait, have you guys have you guys started reading Crescent City yet? Oh yeah. I'm in book two. Okay, so Susie's behind, but like they do eventually. <laughs> At least Sarah knows uh. how to write it. <laughs> <laughs> I know. The, what is it? The Sarah knows how to write a partier, so I don't know why she didn't make them partiers, is what I'm saying. <laughs> Honestly, now that I've finished, so I, I finished book one, and I'm probably like um, a third of the way into book two. Her writing in Crescent City is so good, and really, I think, better than her writing in Throne of Glass and Akatar. Yeah. Well, I mean, she started writing Throne of Glass when she was like 19. So I feel I like her writing has evolved as she's gotten older, which is great. Uh, mm -hmm. It makes me so mad that people are sleeping on Crescent City just because it's a thick girl. It's a big oh, titties book. It is a tome. That thing <laughs> is the Bible incarnate. You're going to have to really get in it. Like, <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah. That's people are like, it could have been it. shorter. Bitch. <laughs> I have it. I have both of them in physical. Honestly, and honestly, I want to read it. I do. But I started and I'm on like chapter three. Mm -hmm. And it's like so much happening at the same time. And so many people. And I'm like, what the fuck? I feel like I'm on acid right now. <laughs> you're exactly. Okay. Welcome yeah. to Christy Cunning. You're not that far off. You know, you're like, <laughs> you're almost there. You're almost there. Here's. Well, for anyone who's starting Crescent City, my suggestion is just with the, get through the first hundred pages and then you're in. Like you're yeah. in. Just understand that you're not gonna you're not gonna remember anything. But it's like she does the first like three chapters. She tells you every character's name, every oh. every town, ship, every city. She goes through all of it. But don't worry, she will revisit it one at a time and re-explain it to you. And there's a map at the front that you can reference. Like, so don't worry, you don't have to maintain all that information in your head. Like now, literally, though, when I was reading, and I'm still on book two. <laughs> How do I know their grandma and their phone number and the color of their panties? I will not remember this. That's like, fair. You yeah. get it. If you just keep reading, eventually it'll all start making sense. But one thing that I love about Crescent City is that, like, it surprised me. I couldn't make, mm -hmm. I, and I, like, I don't want, I don't want to, like, sound conceited when I say this, but, like, usually when I start reading books, I can generate, like, what's going to start happening. And I'm yeah. like, okay, this is based on like these clues like this is the direction it's gonna go in crescent city i was like i want to stop making predictions because everything's going to shit every 300 yeah. pages exactly so yeah yeah no dude in the first in the first book the like it's like right at 150 pages from the end right after the almost sex scene you go like four pages later i i put the book down and i was like what <laughs> Wait, wait, wait. Yeah. Crescent, City, Crescent City has sex? Like, yeah. just money? No way. Almost. Almost. There's it's almost sex. It's a slow sex. burn. That's a very slow, slow burn. It's okay, painfully but, slow. Like, but is it it's worth, like, it? slower than slow burn. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, okay. I wouldn't say that the sex scenes are worth it. The sex scenes were not my favorite in the second book, but there are some sex scenes. I just... Mm. The build-up is I don't worth know. It. The buildup is definitely feel, worth it. Yeah. The male main character kind of gives bro to me. And mm -hmm. you know who my favorite is in Crescent City? The brother. How oh, the the sunball. Mm -hmm. Oh, the oh, her brother. Yeah. Oh. Oh yeah. He's a pleasure dom for sure. Oh hell yeah. So, oh, now oh, yeah. now you're yeah. telling me he's giving <laughs> No, 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 but I'm like, you're telling me he's giving bro, and then you're telling me no, but the brother is giving pleasure. This, I need to read this. I keep so, telling you. Camilla, Nobody ever listens to me, but I'm always right. <laughs> you are always right, baby. You are, you are. Camilla, <laughs> we we love to do this with people that have read Akatar, and we need to do it with you, of course. Fuck, Mary kill the bad mm -hmm. boys. Dun, dun. 
Who are you killing? Oh. Who are you fucking? Who are you marrying? Cassian, Reese, and Azrael. I am marrying Reese and mm-hmm. even mm-hmm. after Charged the fifth book. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. All right. Okay. Oh yeah. oh yeah. I love that protectness fight about him. Hell I yeah, I'm marrying Reese and I'm marrying Reese and I am fucking the shit out of Azrael. Hell yeah. <gasps> I we haven't even had we haven't even had a sex scene. I just know homie is throwing it down. And then I am killing Cassian for me for like going through all that shit with Nesta. Hi guy. So that's where I am. The way yeah. I cannot stop smiling because if you don't know this woman and you don't listen to her podcast, you didn't know oh. that she would say that. But I knew you were going to say that you were going to fuck uh Azrael. I knew it. Because hashtag sad boy, baby. Oh, oh my god. Yeah. I'm I'm sick to my stomach. I need, I need to like write a letter to Cassian and just be like, I want you to know I don't agree with her. Okay. Nah, he can have Nesta. They can burn in hell together. <laughs> Wait, are you a are you not a Nesta stan? I'm no. It's okay if you aren't because I feel like that would be a really interesting dynamic yes. here. I feel like okay. I feel like we should talk about we should talk about mist and fury and Aqua war wings and ruin okay, let's talk about the first three because whenever we start talking about nesta i really want to get into like why i hated the last two books okay, okay yeah so, but before we yeah, get, yeah, there, get into it get there, no no no. before we get there because we will forget okay. this and this is very okay. important for the podcast because this podcast is it, it is about fantasy books sex dick cup mm-hmm. what, all of that but how has reading oh. romance slash mud affected you in real life? It helped me. Oh man, <laughs> I don't even know. How, I mean, this is like a this can this can be a really deep answer for me because like I I have been reading for such a long time ever since I can remember when I was younger. I I don't know. I always just I I had a really active imagination and books was really the only way that like I felt alive. And as soon as I started like, you know, because I I read your, you know, your Nicholas Sparks and your fun little intro to romance books where it's like, yeah, it's cute. Um, Yeah. But then when I really when I started reading like fantasy and smut. I'm so sorry. (laughs) (laughs) Um, But when I started reading like smut, romance, (laughs) fantasy, like I feel like it just unlocked a side of me that I have just enjoyed getting to know more. Um, you know, especially Preach. like when I started reading books where it's like, you know, when there's like male on male or, you know, female on female or whatever, like that, like made me, I don't know, it just books help me, you know, reach my imagination in like such better ways. And I, smut has just, I, I can be more vocal about it and not feel ashamed because I have my little books with me who guard me, who guard my Oh heart. my God. So, I love that. That was you know what that, beautiful. What you just said made me like make a connection in my brain. How, because uh, Susie said the same thing. I've said the same thing. Reading these books have like opened our eyes to different possibilities of things that you might be into, things you might like, you know, ways that you might be. And it's kind of like reading these smut books that, especially books that have MM or FF in it, it's kind of, uh, it's the best way to combat uh, comp het, um, Mm. compulsory heterosexuality, for those of you who don't know what that means. And it's just like, because you're, a lot of us are raised in like, just, oh, being gay is okay, but you're straight and you're, you know, when you get you know, when you grow up, you're going to marry a man and you're going to have a family and blah, blah, blah. And it's always just assumed that the default is being straight and you're never really exposed to anything else. And you're never really allowed to uh, figure out if anything else clicks better. And reading these books 100% like exposes you to something where you go, oh, wait, I like this. Maybe I'm not just vanilla straight regular, you know? So like, exactly. I love that. It's like the opposite of compet. Amazing. Uh, I do want to, I have my favorite quote on why I read. I have it saved in my notes. I actually got it from a book, but the quote is, I lived a thousand lives to escape 
from real life because real life is shitty and boring and that's <laughs> one of my favorite like why i read quotes i love that my life is shitty and boring my life is very fun but books are even more fun it's from wasted words that book is like a ya i love your answer and i think that honestly sometimes for us is very di- as women specifically is very difficult to talk about sex even evolve around sex because we think that is depending on how you grew up uh you think it's like sinful it's dirty it's not okay mm-hmm. and to me i grew up with a very weird uh idea of sex and everything sexuality even though i always known i'm bisexual and when i started reading books i was like oh my god i don't need people i have found them in these books they are right here i don't need anybody else <laughs> so i understand that and i love the fact that you said before something like uh you became non-monogamous or you gave the opportunity to it because of books and after to me it was the same i always i always felt like you don't have to be with one person but i always was in like that type of relationship uh with other people and then i read packing around emily rath you know i love you we cannot wait to have you here and then i'm like i need to be rachel i need to be rachel i want to be rachel i need a little mari i need a jake i need a, a caleb it depends on what books you're reading mm-hmm. but sometimes you can read something 100 times and doesn't click and then you find that book that one that is like Yes, it's you. It's the one that is helping me understand everything and put everything together. So keep reading, mm-hmm. my children. Keep reading because you never know what one book can change for you. Read mm-hmm. all the reverse here in books. It's <laughs> mm-hmm. my favorite genre. Mwah. Amen. Mwah. Amen. Ugh. One quick question though: Have y'all read uh, what is it? Filthy Rich Boys by Chris uh, by uh, C M Stunnick? No, but that name put I'm going to freaking list. read it. Filthy Rich Boys by C.M. Stunnick. I also really love her Havoc series. That's a good one. Ooh. Heck yes. Uh, before we move on, are you a Kindle girly or a physical book girly? Ooh, Kindle. I love physical books, don't get me wrong, but I can read at night better with my Kindle. <laughs> <laughs> yep. And it's more comfortable for your hands. Yeah, exactly. Yep. Yep. You want to get into the Okey books? Dokey. Let's do it. Yeah, so we, we want to know. You already mentioned... <clears throat> In order to get into Nesta, we need to revisit Acomath and Acowar to really get why or what your issues are with her, correct? Mm, yeah. So yeah, del- dive in. <clears throat> let us let us know. Like what was what was your like initial reaction to her as a character and where where did those problems develop? Well, I mean, when we're <clears throat> introduced to Nesta, especially like, you know, in, in the very first book. You know, mm-hmm. you've got Elaine and Nesta. They're not helping the family. You know, they're mm-hmm. Nesta's just resentful as fuck towards her dad. And then, you know, they just want whatever, you know, Feyre can get from <clears throat> her kills or whatever, you know, from the market so they can get their little coin and they can get their new boots. And I feel like that intro right there just, like, really set the tone of, like, okay, do these women care for her Mm -hmm. in like or what is this relationship because it's not really giving good and the more and i'm not gonna lie you know honestly it's been a few like a week or two and i've read a lot more books um since i've read the first couple books but as the more that we see you know elaine and nesta in the books i'm just you know and the way they evolve and like okay you know they get they realize that, you know, Feyre, there was this enchantment and Feyre is actually, you know, meddling with the fairies. When Nesta was, like, supportive of Feyre going back to go help Tamlin, I was like, okay, so that's how we know that there's going to be, like, you know, a healing arc somewhere in here. It's not going to happen anytime soon, but it's going to happen very slowly and over time. I'm like, okay, great. And then we get to the part where, you know, of course you know there's the big battle we're all getting ready for it the two sisters get turned into fey and they didn't really treat that that well um but <laughs> like for the well for the fact that which by the way my favorite line in the whole entire series thus far 
was the king being like the Hellcat, if you would be so kind, right before they put <laughs> Nesta in the cauldron. <laughs> Do y'all remember that line? Because I will literally I don't. Nicole, Nicole and yeah, I will yeah, be yeah, just yeah. like sitting having dinner, and all of a sudden, I'll just randomly say, "I'm," I'll be like the Hellcat, if you would be so kind. That's, That's just like be- the name of this episode. I'm not. I'm not even fucking with you right now. The Hellcat, if you would be so kind. <laughs> I mean, I I really loved the first. The first three books of Akitar are my favorite. You get to see Feyre and Reese and falling in love. You get to know the family, the inner circle. Amran is a fucking badass. I love her so much. I love mm-hmm. every single. I love the way that she built up. Um, Feyre and Reese's story. I think she did it really well. And the way that it was kind of like this like push-pull, slow burn. And it wasn't really, I don't want to say it was enemies to lovers because, I mean, yes, they were like technically, you know, enemies at the beginning, but I think like she saw who he was yeah, early on. I could tell that there was like something about her that it just kind of like, she wasn't very hateful towards him. She was just guarded. Uh, so I think the first three books of Akatar are definitely my favorite. You know, at the at the very last one before, um, which Akawar, the the final one where there's like the big battle and you know the dad shows up and Elaine of all fucking people puts a knife through the king. I was like, that I didn't see coming. <laughs> Well, the thing that, and here's where, like, it pissed me off. I thought book three had such a powerful, like, presence. Yeah. Mm. I would say, I would say the first, I mean, the first three books, all of them, I think, were phenomenal. And the last one really had a great presence. I don't, I was not, like, that sad when recent died, because I fucking knew. I was like, they're going to bring him back. Like, he's not going to go anywhere. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> what really pissed me off is like the way that it went, like it went to, which one was it? Um, what is the, that 3.5, the Accord of FAS? Uh, Starlight. It's Starlight. Uh, Frost and Starlight. Why did we write that book? Well, yeah. okay. So here's my thought with that book. I, I, a lot of people take that book for granted. I think that it was for the people who were just interested in in the character development outside of the of conflicts so like they don't have a war going on they don't have amarantha like over their heads it was the characters developing and then i think that it was important to make the to make uh silver flames make sense because if they didn't give if they didn't give any information as to like the dynamic of the inner circle and how Elaine versus Nesta was being treated and what happened with Nesta and Cassie and after she laid down her life for him Mm -hmm. uh, and confessed their love for each other. Uh, If they didn't talk about that at all, then it all of a sudden just went to Nesta's back to being a bitch again. It would be more confusing, but like, she did kind of snap back into <clears throat> Fox and Starlight into just being a bitch for no reason. I, but at least there was the con the conversation between all the characters, like, why is she being such a bitch? Like, you know, they were giving yeah. insight into the uh, question of it I all. Do, I agree with you on that front. I definitely agree with you in the fact that, like, there was, there was still a lot that we needed to see before we got to Silver Flames. I just think that we could have paired that book and silver flames almost like congruently and still have made it like i think more impactful i just feel like we lost a lot of i don't want to say spark or pizzazz but it almost just like i I, as the reader i was just like kind of confused on how things were going to progress and like i saw Mm -hmm. her trying to piece it together but i wish it would have been done at the same time like a Silver Flames because you're right. Whenever we get to Silver Flames, like A, Nesta's back to being a bitch, which like I totally, yeah, I get it. She was depressed. Like we need to get through that. But then we get an entire book of nothing but her training day in, day out. And I was like, (laughs) and we lost 
so many other characters. We lost, you know, more. We lost part of Amrin. We lost Osriel. We rarely saw him until the end of the book. It's like we now, and Lucian, you know, everybody basically. And then now going into the next book that's coming in, we have to have so many other characters built up again so we can feel connected. No, and I love I love both of your uh, theories of on why she wrote those that one specifically. But to me, I think it is if you know how she writes, you know she the, the things that she put there will come back at some point. And for example, Morgan looking at something in the woods that's coming back. Um, Lucian saying something, mm. Elaine saying something. Whatever happened in that book, I know it's going to come back in the next books. I do have to agree with you on they she has to rebuild again Morrigan's story and Rem's story in the next book. And it's going to be a little bit exhausting for us that we have that fresh knowledge because it's going to be like, damn, again, like I know this. You don't have to. I don't know if you read uh, Ice Planet Barbarians <clears throat> before, but in, in every book in, in that series, um, <clears throat> She has to build up again a little bit of the stories from the other characters. And it's like, if you know what happened because you are reading the whole series at the same time, you're like, damn, again, I know this. And then you just get bored a little bit, right? I think that's going to happen with the next book. I hope she makes it fun in a way that we're like entertained and not like, oh my God, I know this about her son. Like, I don't care. Let's see how that happens. But I love both of your points because they're true. That reminds me, uh, when we were walking around New York together, Susie, we had a whole conversation about how we realized that Sarah tends to think that her readers are kind of stupid, oh, so she over explains things about a lot. That. Uh, I agree. And you just you saying that reminded, and sometimes it's like you don't have to you don't have to hold our hand and walk us through the diabolical plan. Like the the bad guy doesn't have to give the monologue because we know. Like we, we've been reading the whole thing. We get what's happening, you know? Um, and it feels a little bit like she holds her hand and walks us through it. Like, so did you see what I did here? Did you see that? Did you? Yes, we mm-hmm. saw it, Sarah. Thank you. And I feel like that might be what happens a little bit here. It's like, oh, do you remember when the Morgan was feeling upset and she saw that thing in the woods? Well, actually, yeah. if you can tie it back and you, we're going to be like, we thank you for the callback. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's it's kind of like a joke. It's less funny when you have to explain it. <laughs> I am worried that that's what's going to happen in the in the future books. Is it's going to be yeah. overly explained? So well, and that's what I'm hoping, especially with the next book. Now, I I'm assuming she's kept the same editor throughout, obviously, because the editor knows the series. Um, my only wish for Sarah and her editor or that they don't walk us through everything and that they realize that some of that shit can just be taken out and take us exactly straight to the fucking point. In the yeah. sense of that, like, you know, I I would, she has a lot of ground to cover in these next coming books. Wh- what's going to happen with Lucian? What's going to happen with Osriel? Mm-hmm. Elaine? Like, who more, you know? And then I know there's all these theories about, like, yeah. Gwyn and you know Emery and this and that yeah, and, and like, Vasa okay. and Jurian as well. Exactly, exactly them too. Yeah. It's like there's so many characters that it's like whose love story is next. Also, yeah. I, I want to see a happy ending for Lucian and yeah. Eris. Oh, fuck yes, like I want oh, Eris. Yes. We already know is gonna be he's gonna be a good character. I already know it. And you know, then you have like all you know everyone else in the court that is gonna get you know their little. HEA as well too so I'm just I'm really curious to see how it goes with the next books for sure yeah. this is bolstering my my fan theory that there's going to be nine books because there's just too much to squeeze into less three books for Feyre three books for Nesta three books for Elaine I'm just saying it would be perfect that's mm, oh see I love that but I don't wow. I really it's don't think she's gonna finally do that. plenty of time but there were eight I mean, books in Throne of Glass. I don't see why it couldn't be done. And listen, nobody is going to tell Sarah to keep it brief. She can't do it. So. You're right. No, it's so fucking. That's going like to be a good clip because it's so stuff. true. I'm like, I get it. The sky is blue and there's a star in the sky. I love it. Like, we don't need to read about that. 
<laughs> totally, totally, totally. Oh my God. I feel the same way with any descriptions on in books. It's like, I just want to read the book without the how the fucking door looks. I don't need to know that. <laughs> Walk through like, the door. I want to know some how some of the doors look because I love the imagery. I love a good imagery, but it's got to be done right. Thank um, you very much. When you have and a not whole like, paragraph's worth of imagery. Exactly. And not like every... Yeah. A uh, door that you're gonna see, it's gonna be special. No babes, no doors, no walls. I just need the fucking yeah. and the romance and the story, but I don't need the decoration all yeah. the time. Now, I mean, I, okay, so I wanna ask y'all, how did you feel about, like, for example, I, I really do like the way that she's written Nesta and Cassian's story thus far. You can tell that Nesta is making some progress and you know, that they really love each other, and I have no idea why she gave herself birthing hips, but, you know, now homie <laughs> wants a child, maybe, like, you know, maybe we're gonna get a little cousin for Nyx. Like, I saw a fan theory where they're like, you know, everyone's wondering if Cassian's gonna die at the end. Yeah. And I feel like if She'll she does so that... to be Cammy if Cassian dies at the end. <laughs> huh? No, I wouldn't. No, I wouldn't, <laughs> because you know what? Despite Nesta being a total bitch, I don't think she deserves that. And I think that's going to be so sad for her. Uh, I don't want him to die. But here's my here's my qualm. I'm like you. I read patterns in books, shows, movies, and I can kind of guess what's happening. And thus far, nobody of importance has died. Um, so I'm nervous. Because I feel like she did Nesta real fucking dirty for the first four books. Um, and so I have a very strong feeling she's old habits die hard. She's going to take Cassian away from her. And then she's just going to, she's going to be like, oh, but Nesta's still healed. And she healed. And that's why she can process Cassian's death in a healthy way. And uh, no, if you go through all that work and you become the person that you always knew you could be without a shitty ass mom traumatizing you and you finally find somebody who treats you like you're worthy of something and then you pull yourself out of this depth of a lack of self-worth and then your mate dies on you, I hope Nesta becomes a fucking bad guy. I hope. I hope she burns the world down. Well, and th and that's what I would think she would do if that would happen. And, um, oh, man, I was going to say, oh, that's what I was going to say. The thing about, especially as you we're getting to know the three sisters, if it's anything I've realized, the most vulnerable one is Nesta. It's mm -hmm. not oh, yeah. Aira. It's not Elaine. I think Elaine is going to have the most interesting arc towards the end because she's so fucking boring right now. So <laughs> we better get, I'm not kidding you. Especially, especially with her seer powers, she's going to become a little brujita in the woods. Like it's going to be really, yeah. It, no, but it is. Yeah, it, she's. It's going to be something interesting. But the most vulnerable sister is Nesta because she has. She's. You can really tell, especially in um, the that fluffer book that I hate, and um, Silver Flames, and those two books. You can really tell that, like, her pain is she just lets it fester and manifest mm -hmm. into much bigger things where Feyre kind of really directs it, you know, and you could see how Feyre directed her pain and her, you know, her trials. Nesta really let it, like, get to her. And mm -hmm. I don't, and Elaine, I think, has just been way too fucking sheltered, so she doesn't actually know what pain is. Um, so that's going to be the most interesting part. I do have to say, Cassian dies. I'll fucking stop reading Sarah J. Mas forever. Yeah, I'll never One. forgive her. Two, I'm at I Nesta's the inner stand. circle will die. Honestly, mm. by this point, if the Morrigan dies, I wouldn't give a fuck. Exactly, because we barely know her right now. Yeah, right? honestly, honestly. Yep, that's but, what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying with the next book. She's got to build them up again. Or it's like, we're not going to be fucking sad if you kill them. And maybe that's mm -hmm. what she's trying to do. I don't know. I do think that she can, uh, she might kill Tambling though. Because she knows the fandom has like feelings for him. Not like they love him. 
but she knows that we have some type of we want him to be better because of a few theories that there mm-hmm. are here and there whatever we want him to be better we want him to have a happy ending too same as lucian and aries and asriel right so i do think she might kill tanley mm-hmm. because i don't see what other way like what can happen there with him like he's gonna get better and the spring court is gonna rise i don't think so it'll rise <laughs> he just becomes the new hitler <laughs> There's like Imagine. one flower in the spring court right now. <laughs> um, honestly, like when I when I look when I look at the characters right now and like who's probably like on the chopping block, I because if you think about it, like what do all authors do? It's the second degree characters that get taken down. It, it's it might be Lucian. We might lose Stop, Lucian. No, it could no. be Tamlin. Is not Lucian. It would make the most sense. Think about it. If if you're she's making not me killing sweat Lucian, and not in a good way. Kill? I mean, it. Listen, I think Lucian could be a really cool character arc, but I can absolutely see him dying in the midst of Tamlin's redemption arc. Yeah, like no. to save his no. friend. Or you know what she could also do? She could also build up Eris and Lucian to become friends again, and then kill off Eris, or something like that. Mm. The problem is that we like all of these side characters too much. <laughs> I fucking love Eris. I, I think love Eris him. Is gonna, you know, rule us all by the end. Yeah, he's getting daddy. At the end of the series, we're all gonna be so head over heels for him. I think so. You need to listen to our previous episodes, uh, just like the last few ones, because we have some ideas, and <laughs> Eris is gay, yeah. and or Elaine, bisexual or bisexual. Elaine is or bisexual, uh, and Elaine is. We're just making everybody gay, first of all, and then second yes. of all, Elaine is cunning, and she knows exactly what she's doing, and she's manipulating everybody. That's what I'm saying. I'm right there mm-hmm. with you. I'm like, oh, it's so boring right now. And she's about to become the brujita in the woods. Like, it's going to be, it's going to be interesting. Yeah. And and it's going to be like a little conniving almost. Yeah. We, we're yeah. manifesting for Elaine. We're manifesting for her to be like Amarantha style at some point. And honestly, that's it. My, that's my whole thing. For the next book. I just want her to be a fucking villain. Go bollocks with everyone and everything. That's all I want. I really, I want to see someone with two meat bonds. Uh, <gasps> you know, reverse here inside of me is like kicking in. Yes, but listen, but it's Sarah. It's Sarah J. Moss. She's mm. never going to write something like that. Mm. Ugh, I know, but just bitch, step out of your comfort zone, you know, from the nice. Yeah. It'll be, it'll, it'll be Aris. like Asriel, it'll be like Asriel, Eris, and Morrigan, the thruple, because Eris is the one that has two mating bonds, not Asriel and Mor, Eris is the, is the vortex of that, of that reverse harem right there, uh, which would be amazing, because then you'd get some MM, uh, oh. And then Morgan, and then it'd be Polly because then because Morgan is gay, she's going to be like, listen, yeah, I get that we're biologically mates. I mean, because she's also, she slept with Helion. So like, whatever. No, but I think more is gay. So she's, and lesbians are not Polly. Okay. They're monogamous as hell. Um, (laughs) They're. Listen, the way that I already know that in the saddest and most upsetting way possible. (laughs) So I, all I'm saying is I don't think it'll be more. I think we're going to get, if we do get two meeting bods, it might be like Lucian, Osriel, and Elaine maybe, or it could be, I could see mm-hmm. Eris having two, you know, I, I would love to see Helian take a I grander never... role in the next books too. Um, uh, pause there. First of all, I never thought about Lucian and Asriel. I would die for a book like that <laughs> like them together <laughs> oh. <laughs> one and two Helian. if you listen to any of the episodes on this podcast 
I'm obsessed with that man. He is my daddy. He's my savior. He's my Lord. I love him. You know, we do get a lot of recent, especially, you know, in the first three books. Or wait, no. Which book was it where Reason was kept insinuating to three sons? Mm -hmm. <gasps> that would like, be the whenever second he book. was Yeah, whenever he, whenever he told Pharaoh, whenever he was like, Tell him we'll both be free we'll both be free in an hour, you know, something like that. So I do think we're gonna get a three a three way at some point. They're fucking better because the editor already made her delete the one with Cassian and Asriel and Nesta, and I'm real upset about it. Oh, man. There, it I, was I written was and it was deleted. And she, all the other times, they make it into a bonus chapter. And this time they were like, no, just delete it. Why? Oh, Why do you hate us? Not fair. What did we ever do? We read your books. We bought your books. Did y'all read that bonus chapter where Osriel almost kissed Elaine? Yeah. Of mm hmm. Uh, that chapter, that bonus chapter, is the reason that I don't like Asriel. Uh, Roche, we talked about this okay, because you know what? I kind of agree. I'm sorry. I I kind of agree with you because he he comes off a little entitled there. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, no, women. You guys get and a sister. Stop. Why don't I get an Archeron sister? No, 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 no. It's, Shamila doesn't get to person. say this because she's fucking she's fucking Asriel, and you're fucking killing Cassian, so you do not get to say this right now. <laughs> The entitled ones are the most freakiest. Like, okay, yeah, the no, he'll be a but... good, he'll be a good fuck, but you don't want to be married to that man. That's a toxic relationship. But he's a great one night stand. Exactly. No. Shut um, your before mouth. We, before we... <laughs> we kill Reese because then also Feyre dies. Two birds, one stone. Thank you. Ooh. That's my favorite. <laughs> okay. I'm Why? sorry. From the... yeah. I want to know, okay, we have to ask you a question about that then. Mm. Okay, so how do you feel about the Feyre arc? Before we get into Nesta, how do you get, how do you feel about the Feyre arc? Because she was a total badass the first three books. And then the fifth book, when we see her again, she's preggers and she doesn't do anything. Mm. Mm. Um, well, because here's the way I see that. It makes me sad because we basically this is the author's way of telling us like and i've seen this done in other series before it's like oh recent and Feyre got their happy ending that's it that's all that you makes, get that's so sad kids should not be the end of your story it shouldn't be like oh this is where everything's over no, I think especially like as we get more into the plot and like the actual like battle and you know whatever conflict the the pinnacle of the conflict I definitely think we'll see Feyre get back into like that more badass stance but for now while she especially in what I assume the next books while she's building up other characters and other love stories and you know other timelines like Feyre and Recent are just going to be on the back burner um mm. which is sad for me because like I fucking love Recent. You know, yeah. I I would have been hella happy if we had just gotten eight books of Feyre and Reese, but you know, obviously that's yeah. not gonna happen. So yeah, that's how I felt after when I realized that they were switching away from the Feyre POV. I was like, wait, no! Like, I almost had anxiety about losing them, but I'm really happy with what I got instead. So yeah, rapid fire questions, book one to both of you. Favorite characters, one, two, three. Lucian, Cami. Oh. Feyre. Uh, why we Feyre. hated this book? Uh, because the middle part when Feyre has to go back to the human lands, um, I didn't understand why he was sending her back, and I thought that was really fucking stupid. Same. Susie, who's your favorite character or scene, character from Echo? Uh, Tar. Tar. What Tar. is it? Tar. 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 Uh, no doubt, Ms. and Ma'am Amarantha. I love her. Mm -hmm. All right. We're, um, least favorite scene. It has to be any fucking scene with Tamling. Ugh. <laughs> so the whole book. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Ugh. That's fair. This time, Cami, for Akamath, your favorite character. Ooh, Amarin. Recent. Recent. Yeah, recent. Definitely. Mm -hmm. No doubt. Okay, for me, it's the cereal. <gasps> Eat it. I win. You guys 
if you're not watching right. this video, go watch it because Rache has like gangsta attitude today and I love it. All right, what's your what was the thing you guys hated about the book? Uh Cammy, you first. Oh wait, no, I'll let y'all go first. Oh, all right. Oh. What did you hate the most, Susie, about this book? I go math that we get to know e I am <laughs> I hate her with my whole heart. I know. Yeah, she's the fucking worst. I forgot I about fucking her. Hate so, her. Yeah. Uh, Actually, uh, that would be mine. Um, I think I, the moment we got introduced to her, I was like, I hate her. I don't know who she is, but she's gonna be bad. <laughs> Uh, it's because she was a blonde. Uh, uh, no hate. I'm so sorry. I'm naturally blonde. I can say it. Uh, so my least favorite part about this book was when they lied to Tarquin. Um, instead of just being like, hey, we need this half of the book. Will you work with us? Because Tarquin is low-key a total badass. And he didn't deserve to be played like that. He didn't deserve it, and still this day, mm -hmm. I love Tarquin. He's my bisexual queen, uh, king, queen, queen, queer, whatever. Rache, yeah. you gonna everybody's ask queer else? in this book, according to me and Susie. Yeah, uh, nope, that's it about Akamath. Okay, Akawar. Okay, my favorite character in Akawar, a recent, but also the Bone Carver. Mm. Um. Mm. The way he dies when he just like smiles at Feyre and just. I know. Oh, yeah, yep, yep, yep. Gets yep. Me. Um, the scene I hated the most when Feyre had to fake, <laughs> like going back to the family. Oh, oh, yeah, that was pretty hard mm. to read. Mm -hmm. Though I was secretly the whole time I was like, "Fuck yeah, yeah." <laughs> Another. Yeah. I was like, "Yeah." Yeah. Back to Susie, you know. favorite character, the serial, no mm -hmm. doubt. And mm -hmm. I don't, I have a lot of favorite scenes, so I'm going to say one that I don't like. Uh, I hate when the serial dies, but I love when Ianthe dies. That was like, that brought me so much pleasure. It was amazing. Mm -hmm. I love that for you. I want to, you know what? I think I'm going to say my favorite character in this book was Feyre because she was a total fucking badass in this book. Heck yeah. Um, she was just slaying body. Scene I hated the most, I was going to say the, ser the surreal dying as well because uh, cried so hard. I really hated when they were fucking in the tent while people were dying after the summer court was attacked. <laughs> Little tone deaf. <laughs> People are dying, Feyre. <laughs> Could you get the dick out of your mouth for like a second? No, you know what's more healing? Stitches. Blood transfusions. <laughs> for Akko Foss, I don't even want to get into that book. Um, <laughs> what are we, we going to say? He hated when she painted. <laughs> like, Dude, I, I forgot that so much of this series is her painting. Oh my god, Kavi, you first of all, you're hilarious. And second of all, I love the fact that you think so different from us because it brings a different, like, a, a, something mm -hmm. new, something spicy to the podcast. So mm -hmm. let's talk about Akafas. Yeah, we Tell don't need an echo woman. chamber, so. <laughs> exactly. Tell me, woman, mm. what was your favorite character and scene from this book? I don't even remember. <laughs> that painting chick. Just for because she is a guest today and she hated this book we're gonna freaking skip it because honestly there's not much going on so it's okay uh so let's see flames um, favorite character is Cassian. Mm. yes he he did great in this mm. book he really did i don't know how he put up with it but he did um i'm i'm, I'm flabbergasted right scene. now because you just killed him yeah i am but i still love him I'm hated part the fact that warriors tree for the right for years but three chicks that started training three months ago. Won it. Mm -hmm. Do you know why? Because women are better than men. Period. Yes, but it still <laughs> made no sense. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I don't need the men's rights activists coming for me, okay? I was joking. Yeah. It's not a dick. Don't come. take it so hard, okay? God. Let I'm going to get hate They don't mail. get to do it often. This is the book, because we need to get into this with you, specifically. This is the book that had the most smut mm -hmm. from the whole series. So, what are your thoughts on mm -hmm. how Saya Jemas wrote the smut on this one, specifically? Well, I thought it was a hell of a lot more interesting than the missionary <laughs> we got from Feyre and Reason. <laughs> we actually got, like, some 
some doggy, uh, some blow you job. know, spanky, spanky. Yeah, exactly. We got a blow job and a dinner table. Mm. Yeah, mm-hmm. desk sex, mm-hmm. bath, yeah. bathtub sex. So I think we need a lot. I I want to ramp that up even more. Mm-hmm. Next book. Mm-hmm. I think she did really good with the sex scenes in this one. They were really um, interesting. Mm-hmm. It's a massive. We love those. I can't. I can't even. It's unrealistic. <laughs> I'm trying. Oh my god, you guys. Okay, so if you have to choose one scene, like one smutty scene from the whole Silver Flames, which one would it be? Yeah, the the blowjob at the dinner table scene. My God, it's finally someone agrees with me. Oh, so fucking It was sexy. the most memorable for me. And the fact that, honestly, yeah. it's tattooed in my brain just because Asriel was there too. Even though he said he, oh. he, he wasn't, he was oh. there. I know he was listening. I know he was there like jerking off. I know, I know it. I know it. <laughs> you know what? You know what gets me? Yes, is that Casey. like, he, he knew what was happening before he walked in there. And he made his footsteps all loud so they would, like, stop doing it. And I'm like, excuse me, Shadow Singer, you could have just slipped right in there, made yourself at home. You could have just integrated yourself. Nesta even thought about it. You you know he has smelled her arousal when she looks at him in the past. Of course he did. And there's no doubt in my mind that Cassian, there's no doubt in my mind that Cassian and Azrael have definitely... Eiffel Tower to bitch before, okay? So don't tell me that it would not have been 100% kosher. Why didn't they take her to Paris that night? I'm just saying. That was the perfect opportunity. Oh my god. Immediately, immediately, yes. They should have done it. I don't know why she didn't. That was a perfect opportunity to make that book less infuriating. I mean, she wanted to, though. That was hilarious. I'm going to use that line someday in real life why didn't you take me to paris tonight (laughs) hold on if you guys don't know what that is don't google it please do google it actually you don't want to google it you want to urban dictionary it okay (laughs) and please tell me have you have you read anything harley larue Uh, they are an author who has written the losers duet and the prequel to that duet is called the dare Mm, um and mm -hmm. if you like reverse harem and you like white shoes, and you like dark romance, and you like a little bit oh, of BDSM, look at this book. It's 144 pages, and it's 100 mm-hmm. pages of, of smut. You want to be called a bootlicker after it. Yep. Yeah. This book and the other two that come from the series, The Loser's Duet, it's going to be like our biggest books for the second season. And when I tell you this is hot, and mm-hmm. it's 144 pages, I'm not lying. It's hot. It's one of the hottest things I read this year. I, I read it like in two hours on an airplane. And I the whole time I was just like, because I was in the middle seat, not great to read on an airplane. Mm-hmm. But it was a quick read. And I had to change my underwear when I got home. <laughs> it was amazing. It was- okay, I will, due to that review... I will. I will definitely read it. Mm-hmm. I recommend definitely it, really. It. And then come back and discuss it with us. Absolutely, I'm down. Sinners, yeah. we've done it. <clears throat> uh, this season is over. We'll be back. Don't miss us because we're gonna be back so 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 soon. And you know that next season we're gonna be. It's gonna be a hot one. It's gonna be so hot that you will need a fan, AC, and mm. these little hand fans because it's gonna be hot. <laughs> I'm telling you, the ADHD is not going to be ADHD no. because we're going to be focusing on <laughs> and it's very, very smutty. Sure. Very smutty. <laughs> oh, I know. <laughs> Cammy, thank you so much. You did fantastic, amazing, and I loved, loved that your opinions were so different from us because we're Nessa stands through and through, but I love the fact that you mm-hmm. said, this fucking bitch needs a wake-up call. I love it. I really do. <laughs> Poor Cassian. Though I think yeah. maybe you killed him because he deserves a break. <laughs> <laughs> I am excited, though, to see, like, how how everything progresses in the next few mm. books. So I know I, you know, we've gone through some of the theories. I definitely think we're in for a lot. Um, and I think it's going to be good. Also, for y'all's next season, 
you need to read four psychos and then we need to talk about it i promise On my i list. totally promise yep 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 cami anything you want to mm. say before oh i just want to say thank you for having me i love finding people that get just like as much nerdy about books as i do I and y'all are both such treats. Like I, I, I hope that we can all be friends. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I'm sending you an friends. Instagram friend request right now. Ooh, you know what we'll do? We'll do book retreats over Thanksgiving weekend from now on. That way, we don't have to do like cooking and stuff, and we'll just <gasps> go to a cabin together and read books. Yes, we either yeah. need to move to LA or you guys need to move to New York. Either way, will work. I love it. Thank you, seniors. Cami, where can Ooh. our seniors find you? You can find um, me at Double Teamed Podcast on Instagram and TikTok. Double Teamed yes. Pod on Twitter. And I write a lot of my like my own thoughts on that account. And then if you want to check out my Goodreads and read all of my um, reviews on all the books that I've read throughout my life, which is most of them are on there, not all of them, but most. Um, that is uh, Goodreads at Camilla Nilla, N-I-L-L-A. Sinners, you're the best. As always, thank well, you, thank well. you, thank you for watching us. Go and freaking listen to the Double Teen Podcast. If you don't know, Cami is a twin. Yes, she's cool like that. Oh. I'm, jealous. I'm jealous. I always wanted to be a twin, but whatever. Um, go listen to the Double Teen Podcast because it's fucking phenomenal. It's hilarious. They talk about th things that you know that you want to have more friends to talk about. So they are those friends. Go and listen. Follow them. Rate the podcast five stars because they deserve it. And we too. So do it. We love you. Yes. I was supposed to have a script for this part, but I don't because I want to talk from my mm -hmm. heart. Is she just romantic? Mm -hmm. Yes, I am. I just want to say thank you guys, <laughs> sinners, you, because this is the last episode of the whole season. We have been here for so many months already. Uh, Four months? Yeah. <gasps> And it's insane how we started this from a series that we liked and we were like, we need to talk about this. And I'm not gonna lie to you, I love Akatar, but after this podcast, I don't think I wanna know anything about Akatar for like maybe a year. Not lying. I love it. I will love it forever, but I'm tired. I'm just shocked and I love how this podcast has grown from how we. We just wanted to talk about the Akatar series on a podcast. And then through just the insanity of your brain, it was like, oh, what if we were more than just fantasy books? What if we were, you know, whatever. And then the more we talked about it, the more we created this community where being a sexual person and being a woman at the same time is not um, a bad thing. And we've gotten to meet some amazing people who agree with us and who are also uh, part of the movement to normalize sexuality in women and to destigmatize people who like to read the kinds of books that we like to read. And I think it went from just this silly thing that we were wanting to do for fun. And it's become something that has the potential to be so much more important. And it's overwhelming and very exciting at the same time. Honestly, it's overwhelming, but when we get your messages and like videos and comments, it's like, <laughs> we're doing something. So thank you guys. Thank you, seniors. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. Because it feels like it started as, let's talk about something that we love so much, books, Akatar, sex, and it's evolving into we can be, and we already know that we are so much more than that because we're talking about topics from sexuality mm -hmm. to self-help to self-improvement, uh, growth, uh, how these books help you in your daily life. To me, to my brain, to like my life, something that I'm so proud to say, oh my God, I'm doing this to everyone I know. And I just want to say thank you, thank you, thank you. Yes, we are over with the season, but we will be back. It's going to happen soon. And when we're back, Roche, what were we talking about? Guys, we're going to be talking about the Losers yes. duet and the prequel, yes. The Dare, by Harley LaRue. Oh, my heart. Yes. <laughs> yes, guys. And I know you think I'm that's so only excited. three books. Yes. But we have Salacious Players Club. <laughs> we have, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to bring Ruby Dixon to this podcast. I don't know how, but the Ice Planet Barbarians author <laughs> has to be here because I'm on book 27. And I cannot stop. I know. Oh my God. 
I know, I know he's insane. So yes, uh, we're we're manif we're manifesting pucking around and pucking wild. We're gonna get <laughs> yes. I forgot about that. We're, we're manifesting it now. We're manifesting yes. it now. We're gonna get her Emily Rath here. It will happen. She has like a yes. PhD and she writes. She's a doctor. Books. Okay. What? She's a doctor and she doesn't She's only a write doctor smut. She writes reverse harm white shoe smut. What? I know. Yes. And then her writing is so good. Like it's not bad writing. It's so good. No. Exactly. Oh, she's amazing. We cannot wait for the second season. Look, it's going to be so soon that you're going to be like, what? You guys left? It's going to be that fast. I promise you. And we're going to be yeah. so ready. Yeah. We're going to bring mm -hmm. so many more Dear Sinner episodes. Yes, we will. I just want to say again, thank you guys. We cannot wait to see you back the next season. Uh, really, honestly, just from the bottom of my heart, thank you to everyone that shared something, that followed, that rated, told their, uh, their friends about this podcast. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We would not be the same without you. You make everything better. Thank you to everybody who has supported us and and come to us with kind and loving comments. And, and everything you said with C was like, come, come. And I was like, yes, yes, yes. Come, come. Uh, no, uh, thank you for coming with us. I wanted to say, though, Tamlin, if you're listening, you can call off your dogs because we're not talking about the series anymore, okay? So... No. <laughs> Thank you. And you too, Risan, because I know after this I few swear. episodes, you're going to be like, stop. Stop. You're over. Mm, uh, Cassian is a lot of, never over. A lot of people are very upset. Oh my god. You can follow us on all our social medias as at come with us, but and just follow because mm -hmm. you can get enough of us and you know you love us, so... And you know, we're going to be posting there mm -hmm. daily, even though we're not here, we're going to be posting there daily. So you, you're going to see us either way. You're going to see us. You're going to laugh with us over there on Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube shorts. Follow us because we're going to see you over there. Sinners, you have been good little angels for us all season long. Thank you for listening. And remember to stay wicked, stay wild, and keep reading. Bye.